So we went back and we collected these cells from the knockout and wild type and we gave them to the DNA to Alex Meisner's lab. My name is Alex Meisner. I'm an assistant professor at Harvard University and I'm directing the junior faculty program in epigenetic regulation of stem cell function and aging. So out of the, all the junior faculty programs, ours is actually the latest. So it has only been formed about uh, half a year ago. And so we're still in the early stages of, uh, again, developing the experiments. Um, one important thing to sort of think about is sort of how the HSCI also brings us together is to think how distributed we are actually over the city. So we're actually at uh, Mass General Hospital. We're at Children's. We're over in the Longwood Medical Area. We're here at the FAS main campus. And so HSCI is actually bringing all of us together. You have your genome sequence, it tells you exactly what kind of um, genes you have and it tells you, so for example, the classic blueprint of, of how cells are, are made of. But the problem is that if you only look at the genome sequence and the, the individual components, you don't actually know when and how to use them. And so epigenetics provides this additional layer of information that tells you exactly when, how and where to use your genes. My lab, in collaboration with the Broad Institute, um, has over the last few years really try to pioneer technologies to look at epigenetic modifications such as DNA methylation and try to advance the technology in a sense that we can actually use it for looking at very small numbers of cells. So when we initially began these experiments, we usually um, used a million, several million cells. And now over the course of the last two years, we actually got down to numbers of 100 cells or 1,000 cells. Now this immediately begs the question of what's the most interesting system that hasn't been able to actually look at epigenetic modifications in the past. And so one that obviously comes to mind is the hematopoietic system. So we're trying to look in the hematopoietic system, for example, how do you go from a stem cell to the differentiated cells and what kind of changes happen. So it's very clear that gene expression changes occur because cells become um, more specialized in their fate and they change from the stem cell fate to more restricted potential of making very specialized cells in the, in the blood system. How much of that is done by um, just genetic regulation versus epigenetic regulation is not clear at this point and we're trying to figure out exactly what role DNA methylation changes, histone modification, both of which are essential components of the epigenetic code, um, how much role they or what kind of role they actually play during this differentiation. Now one can then look at this from the same um, perspective for our program project um, in, a, in a different axis, which is aging. So you can look at normal development, how it occurs in a normal organism, and now you can look at this in different age groups, for example, in young animals or um, patients, or you can look at this in, in older ones. There are many challenges to getting your lab going, for sure. And again, they range from the completely mundane to the, the larger problems of what, I'm, what, what is the most important question that I can answer in my lab. Um, those big questions like that absolutely require a sounding board of other investigators whose opinions you value and who you know, can really evaluate the directions you're going and say, yeah, yeah, I think that's important and interesting, or, you know, <laughs> not such an interesting question, what about this? And, and you need people that you trust that will tell you, yes, I think you're going in the right way, and no, I think you're going in the wrong direction. What has been most surprising when I've talked about this program and, and the collaborative nature of the research with other people outside of Harvard is how closely we've collaborated and how much uh, support we have for one another. And I think that that is something that is not fully appreciated uh, about this community and it is a very unique aspect to the work that goes on here. Um, it's a surprise to people at other institutions that uh, individual investigators who are all you know, vying to maintain their labs really can be supportive and helpful to one another and that everybody's research benefits from that.